So everyone, Apple wasted zero time in going from the iPadOS 16.1 official release to then giving developers iPadOS 16.2 Beta 1. And from the look of the screen behind me, you can see that we have extended monitor support back, as well as another feature that was promised at the WWDC keynote in June that hasn't released with even 16.1. So let's talk about iPadOS 16.2 because there are some things that are very worth talking about. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. The first thing I like to show off is if we go into my images, I like to take a screenshot of just how big the update was. So for this one, we have iPadOS 16.2 Developer Beta 2, and we have about 4.77 gigs of storage in order to get this installed. Now, I usually recommend that you leave at least twice as much storage to get this installed correctly. Somebody did mention in the comments that that's not absolutely needed, but again, I'm old school, I better be safe than sorry, because yes, if you are updating to a new software, it'll cancel out the last software, which is taking up space, but I always like to give a little extra just in case. But 4.77 gigs, with 16.2 developer beta 1 and it seems that now we are back on the same naming moniker compared to iOS 16.2 beta 1 because for a moment there Apple delayed the release of iPadOS 16 and then they were on different naming monikers but now they are the same. The next thing let's touch on is the actual build number. So if you go into the about section and then click on iPadOS version you can see that we're on 16.2 20C5032 lowercase e which means this again, this is the first one which we probably won't get as many betas as we, as we did with 16.0 and 16.1. But let's see how many betas we do get with 16.2. And a public release of the beta should be coming out next week. So be on the lookout for that. And then the first thing that's new real quick that I will show you since we are here. If we go to the software update section, you can see that the actual text on the iPadOS 16.2 is in bolder letters. So this is the first change we noticed immediately after checking out to see if there were any updates moving forward. But 16.2, it's just, but just to take note that the text is bolder right there. But if we get into the first major change, you can probably see on my home screen that there's a new application right here called Freeform. Now Freeform was an application that Apple did talk about at WWDC back in June, and we were supposed to get it with the 16.0 release and they didn't do that, then 16.1, it wasn't even mentioned. This is the first time we got some hands on with this new Freeform application. So you can see it looks a little bit like the Reminders app when you do open it up. And right here you have all your Freeforms. So if you have multiple boards, your recents, your shared, your favorites. And what Freeform is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a collaboration app, which is kind of like a whiteboard, which allows multiple people to collaborate in real time with sticky notes, with different graphics. It has Apple Pencil support. So you can see you can add shapes in here if I want to. So you have the big square. You can take the pencil out, press on the pencil tip, start writing and saying hello. And this is all on a little piece of graph paper. You know, you can add images from your camera roll, you can scan, you can link to something, you can insert from your folder. And definitely stay subscribed because we will have a complete video going over Freeform in its entirety because this application needs a video on its own. I don't wanna just brush over it. I do wanna let you guys know that it is available and it is with 16.2 beta one. But a couple other differences that just jump out at me, you can see the palette down here, you have a little like paint tool right here. Looks like you can just put splotches of paint with a lasso effect. So if I put a circle, you have that right there. You can change the color prob probably, the opacity, change it to red. It has a lasso and just put splotches of paint if you want to. You also have a crayon, which is something that's also new. We've always had a colored pencil, but now we also have a crayon, which gives you a little bit of different texture, which hopefully we will be able to use at least a little bit more precisely when the new M2 iPad comes in and you have the awareness of the 12 millimeters of the floating actual Apple Pencil 2. But also it is an infinite canvas, so you can zoom out, which is one of my favorite features of something like OneNote. So one of my biggest gripes with the regular notes application is when you were to take notes, you were kind of limited to a certain space, but now you have an unlimited canvas where you can zoom all the way in, get super granular, zoom all the way out to fit as much stuff as you want, use two fingers to move around. And obviously you have an undo button and then you have the share button. And just a little tidbit to let you guys know, it seems that in Freeform you are signed out of iCloud by default. So it says go to settings. So just go into your iCloud settings, go to show all, probably hit this toggle down here for Freeform to be turned on, get back out of your iCloud, let's go back into Freeform, press the share button and see what happens. It seems to be a little bit broken, so let's quit out. Let's go back, go into Freeform, and we're doing this all live, testing it for the first time, so you guys can get an understanding of what it looks like and how it's functioning with a 16.1 beta one. So documents has not synced yet, please wait before attempting to share. So I don't know if that's just an issue with the 16.2 beta one update. And then you also have a new, so you can start up a brand new one, rename it up here and do whatever you see fit. You can hide the grid as well. So these are all options that require an in-depth walkthrough of actual Freeform and the collaboration feature, because I want to know how many people I can invite 
you know, who has ownership over that? Can I have multiple admins? You know, can I have multiple users that have the same amount of admin access? Because I'm curious to know, are there people that can just view the document? So these are all things that we're going to play with and learn over time with Freeform, but at least it's here and it will be on your iPhone, it will be on your Mac, and it will be obviously on your iPad. So definitely leave some questions down below of what you want to know about Freeform as we test it over the coming days and weeks. And we will have, like I said, a full on video on Freeform. But then the million dollar question is, do we get extended monitor support back? And obviously, if you watched the beginning of the video, you know that we did get extended monitor support. But I want to show you guys there's one thing that is new with it. And I also want to show you how long it takes for it to turn on. So right up here, I have a 27 inch 4K monitor and I will connect it via Thunderbolt directly into the monitor. So let's plug it in. So we'll give it some time to turn on. It's again, it's charging already. You see that this is right new. So that external display, a little kind of notification drop down to let you know that you are connected. It happens a couple of times, so it's not perfect. You can see it's going in and out right there. So hopefully it does eventually pick itself up. And normally by that third attempt that it's trying to connect to the monitor, it will do it. Now I'm not 100% sure if it's because of this particular monitor. And maybe if I had a studio display, it would connect a little bit a little bit more seamlessly. But this is what I'm dealing with. And this is a high-end 4K 27-inch monitor, which should be working perfectly. But let's zoom out a little bit so I can show you guys what it looks like again. But here we have Stage Manager again, everybody. It's exactly what we had before. So if I go in, open up multiple applications, these are applications that I had to open from before. So, you know, you can make them bigger, make them smaller. I haven't had, I think I've had only one springboard reset, which is when you get that little dial and it just resets the home screen. But outside of that, it works relatively good. Like you can see, I'm in LumaFusion, I'm scrubbing through timelines. I go into Twitter, we have notifications. You know, I can go in here, type whatever I want to type. It seems to be working. You know, I can scroll over to the left here to get a shelf. Or I can grab one of the applications and move it into the shelf just to have it there for later. I can pull up the dock and it's pretty responsive. I can click on the top right to get the control center down here and still be able to use it and get your options right there. And just so you are aware, extended monitor support by default will be in stage manager mode. So there is no split screen versus down here. You can see that stage manager is turned off. So if I want to split screen down here, I'll grab Safari and then scroll down here, grab another Safari and split view like that. But up here, it'll still be in that kind of stage manager mode esque. But again, if I want to go over here, press on stage manager to turn it on, then I have stage manager running on both the bottom actual iPad and then also on the extended monitor. So, so far it's definitely more stable than it was with the original release at 16.0 beta one, but I'm just hoping it gets finalized with 16.2 and it gets out to all the iPads. Just keep in mind, this is only gonna work with M1 and M2 enabled iPads, which does include the M1 iPad Air, but Overall, I am liking Stage Manager. I'm just glad they're bringing it back. And it was just a quick back and forth that Apple just wanted to get it ready to go and focus on one thing at a time. But let's do one more thing, check battery life, and then get out of here. So like I said, let's check battery life real quick. So let's go into the settings. Let's go down into battery and see who we've been dealing with. Again, obviously this is brand new. We haven't been on iPadOS 16.2 for very long, only a couple hours. But you can see we're doing about three hours and 45 minutes of screen on time over the last 10 days. Daylight Tuesday, we have 8 hours and 41 minutes on about 125% charge. On this day, we had 8 hours and 43 minutes on about 150% charge. So if you're doing a lot of intensive work, which is normally what I do, right? So we have the Photos app, which is Affinity Photo, LumaFusion taking up most of my actual energy and battery performance. So if you are using task intensive applications, you will get five to six hours of battery life. But if you're strictly using web apps in Safari or you're watching video in Apple TV+, Plus then this thing will last you 10 hours. And I'm excited to get the M2 iPad Pro to see if it's worth it at any in any situation. You know, maybe faster export speeds, maybe better battery life, maybe brighter, like something. I want to see if there is something different because this is still a beast of a computer in my mind. And yes, I said computer, but let's see if the M2 iPad Pro is any more of a better computer than this one is. But let's get out of this view and finish up the video. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there was two major updates to the 16.2 developer beta one, and that had to be stage manager slash extended monitor support, which was brought back to iPads. And just as a caveat, this is only gonna work with M1 and M2 powered iPads. So that list is pretty small. This will not work with the A12X and the A12Z chip, which is on the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pro. So extended monitor support will only work with the new M2 iPad Pros, the M1 iPad Pros, and then also the M1 iPad Air. So the iPad Air still remains the cheapest way for you to be able to A, get an M1 chip, and then B, get extended monitor support on your iPad. And then second was this Freeform application. So think about Freeform as this full on collaboration app. It's as if, you know, Apple took what Google has been doing for years with their three separate applications and they bring it into one, into this like clipboard, whiteboard style collaboration mode, which you can invite as many people as you would like and 
work in real time, which will get better with iterations and with betas as they get newer and newer, because right now it's still not perfectly stable, but for the most part, it really is. But that is pretty much it from a feature standpoint, and I'm sure Apple is going to iterate on this because, again, Stage Manager still isn't perfect, still a couple of resets, but still a lot better than it was when it initially released with 16.0 Beta 1. But that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know that you made it to the end. And let me know in the comment down below what do you guys think about Apple removing the extended monitor support, then bringing it back, but then giving Stage Manager to more people, which I'm all for. You know, the more iPads are using Stage Manager, the more Apple can learn from the UI and learn from what users like with and dislike with Stage Manager. But I wish extended monitor support did come to the rest of the iPad Pros, even though they some of them only have 4 gigs of RAM. But that's going to do it, everybody. If you ever want to watch some more iPad OS, iOS, and Mac OS content, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.